On John Bowden, we're up to part four of our conversation with Jason Sheff, our second one. We asked him about working with Bobby Kimball. But working with, uh, how is it for you working with, uh, with Bobby, with the uh, West Coast All-Stars, with Joseph and Bill? I've got that album right back here. Buddy, that was before we had the ability to really do a lot of cutting and pasting. So we sang that. Mm-hmm. And I'm very proud of the fact that the, the tediousness of it and the focus and with people on that level, again, it was like Chaplin, Joseph and me were really like the main part of the meat and potatoes of that thing. And then Bobby really came, you know, over top of it. Um, Joseph and Bill and I were doing a lot of stuff together uh, in general, background vocal uh, wise. And um, it's just, my whole relationship with Bobby Kimball is just phenomenal. You know, um, he always showed me how much he respected me. First time I worked with him was on this um, song for a movie called How I Got Into College. And I brought Bobby in and Champlin to sing backgrounds. And I was expecting Kimball to just like bulldoze, man. But he always would like want to shadow me. That meant the world to me, man. So on this, how I got into college, I got the sound of Champlin and Kimball of like the tubes, you know, she's a beauty type of thing in my song. And I'm like literally getting chills seeing that this is the sound. But again, just like Verdine White and all these guys that, that you would not allow me to be the fan. It went peer to peer. Said a lot, you know, really meant a lot to me. And Bobby was the same thing on, uh, have you heard, have you heard our, um, it was the second um, West Coast All-Stars album, Champlin didn't do it, but I did uh, um, Stairway to Heaven. Have you ever heard that? I don't think so. You got to look that up. It's mostly me. It's mostly me. I did most of the work. Tommy Funderburk did a, a little bit of stuff with me on it. But I bought broad, uh, I brought Bobby in, and when we get to the and as they run on down the road, Bobby's his voice next to mine, and it's again, he was kind of shadowing me. But, buddy, it's like the most insane Toto meets Chicago, it's crazy. Please go and listen to that, you know, when you get a chance. Why do you think that? And I never got this, but it's kind of like people who don't like Rush. If you don't like Rush, you're going to say every song sounds the same, but the fans are real fans. Don't look at it that way. I can understand why they would do that. I, I, I know because of Getty's distinctive vocals, the band sound. But I don't, never understood the Journey, Toto, Chicago thing where people, I can understand the, 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 the similarities, but there'd be writers in the 80s that would go, well, they're all just kind of one band going, really? No. Huh? That's, no. some, that, that's ignorant. That's, I, I never yeah. heard that. No. That's somebody who doesn't appreciate the, the genre. Because, you know, you know, if you're lumping in, that's probably like somebody who's, who's a punk rock fan, you know, that, that doesn't understand any of what that is. Because it's very distinct, distinctively different, you know. Angel, new country meets 80s, 90s, Chicago meets Journey meets Rascal Flats. Like, tell me about that tune. That was a tune when we heard it it's a no brainer and the message is just so great. We're right in the process of getting a video done Well, we're not in it, but it's a, it'll be a, you know, a video with characters and stuff and just third single. Um, I, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And what a fun song to play too. You know, it's just, and it's got, you know, what's, what's awesome, it reminds me of Chicago, it's got three lead vocalists on it, right? Jay, me, and Dean. And um, so that's a real comfortable place for me to be. But that, that thing's rocking, man, right? It's rocking. Yeah. yeah. All night to get there. Tell me about that one. I don't That think- one, actually, I didn't realize that Rascal Flatts had recorded that. That's a cover. I didn't realize that. I thought that's one of those Rascal Flatts foul tips. But apparently Jay told me that, you know, 
the song is great. I can't remember who he wrote it with, some big Nashville hit songwriter. And I think his feeling was that it, it never was released as a single with Rascal Flatts, and he really believed in it. So I, I love that, that uh, sentiment, you know, that, okay, we cut it as Rascal Flatts, but let's, let's put a little heft in it, which we did. Give it another life. Uh, I hope you find it uh, freaking pretty, really pretty. So is he taking the high road or is he just kind of letting it go? Or is like, like I'm, I'm feeling for the guy, you know, as I'm listening to the lyrics of that. I think he's, um, he's totally taking the high road. Um, uh, and it's also, it sounds like a great follow up to my wish rascal flats, like someone's moving on. And, and maybe he's the guy who's been um, left behind, but taking the high road, you know, um, rather than being bitter about it. And so I, funny enough, that song's been cut a few different times. Cher did a version of it. Miley Cyrus did a version of it. I hope you find it. Hmm. It's written by Jeffrey Steele, who wrote What Hurts the Most, My Wish, These Days, so he's, uh, and I, I loved sending it to him and, and he was like, well, you still got the voice, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, you love that. You got to love that, man. Hope you enjoyed that. If you want to support the channel even more, there's links to Patreon and PayPal in the description and links to Generation Radio, the new Jason Chef project. And there'll be details on how you can pick it up. I'm John Bowden. Make sure you share our videos. If you're a member of a group which talks about Jason or Chicago, please share these videos on there. Comment on them, like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and we'd appreciate that. More from Jason Chef in the next few days. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music.